Hi, everybody. Welcome or welcome back to The Way Podcast. I am here with my beautiful mom. Um, People say I look like her twin, and that is such a compliment. Like, literally, my favorite compliment is getting told, you look like your mom, or um, you're so much like your mom. I swear, when people say that, I'm like my heart because i look up to her so much and i'm so glad she is a host on my podcast today um but today i am going to be talking about something that i don't think i've really talked like a lot about on this podcast which is fear and anxiety and the reason i want to make this podcast what kind of sparked my sort of interest in talking about this was one it's obviously just something so easy and common to feel and have living in this world today and living in this sort of like the world we live in if we're being so honest like it's a scary thing there's a lot of scary things happening and it's a very easy feeling to feel to this friday i currently went through something that sparked a lot of fear and anxiety and um inside of me but not just inside of me inside of a lot of people um a lot of people didn't take it as seriously because nothing actually happened but it did actually scare a lot of people including me um which is basically i'm not trying to say this to scare you guys by the way i'm not saying this to like strike fear inside of you this is not what this is supposed to be at all this is me just trying to be honest with you guys because it's a real issue and feeling fear is a very certain issue a very big issue um um, but Jesus is bigger than fear and Jesus is bigger than anxiety but anyways so what um striked this podcast for me or what made me want to do it is this Friday I went through a real lockdown at my school um and one there was no active shooter there was no I don't even think there was a threat on campus there wasn't anything serious that happened but we did go through a real lockdown why that happened I'm honestly not really completely sure myself there was some weird thing with the staff members but I don't want to get too much into that because I don't want to say anything that would like not be incorrect that would not be correct so yeah yeah yeah, you know what I mean um because I'm kind of confused myself still but you know what at some point you've just got to let go of my god so I'm like whatever um but anyways but that's what happened and everybody is okay nobody's injured nobody's hurt nobody's dead um but it happened and for the like past two days i was just stuck in fear because i'm like what if something actually does happen at our school and you know like like after something like that happens and experiencing that it is traumatizing and obviously i'm so glad that nobody's dead or hurt and there was no actual gunshots so that makes me so thankful because if that happened i know i would have been like 20 hundred times more traumatized um but i want to tell you guys how god helped me get through this and he helped show me his peace because there's no peace to be found in this world if we're being honest there's only peace to be found yeah yeah there's only peace to be found in god so anyways today i didn't want to do this podcast alone so i have my beautiful mom here um and we are going to kind of just talk about how jesus helps us whenever we're feeling anxious i have some if you watch the interview i did with my brother's wife jill that one time if not you should totally go watch it it was so good um but it's going to be kind of like that. I wrote down some questions for her, and we're just going to kind of see how it goes, and yeah. I'm so excited to have her, but before I ask her any questions, Mom, why don't you introduce yourself? Okay. Well, I am Mom to Miss Chloe here, and we have three boys, her brothers. Um, Jackson's 27. He's a lawyer. Hunter is a singer, and he's got a great job. Um He's, did I say 24? And he's married to Jill. I can't remember. (laughs) And Mitch is 23. He's getting his master's and playing football. And all three of them love Jesus. And I'm just very thankful for them. And then, of course, I'm married to David, my husband of 28 years, my best friend. And and we live here in Florida. We moved here from Massachusetts um, two and a half years ago. And we're just having the best time enjoying being outside all the time. That's the biggest the biggest thing that we love so much about it here and living close to the ocean which is a lifelong dream that I've had since I was a little girl and my parents used to take me to the beach and I would just sit outside all day long and just based in the sun and dream about living at the beach and finally here we are are. I know I used to pray as like a little girl like God I pray that I get to move to a beach house and like here we are because we used to live in such a cold place um but anyways yes we do have a little change of scenery this probably won't be for every podcast but we wanted to do it outside today tropical just because switching yeah. it up a, switching it up a little bit i guess but anyways yes thank you for introducing yourself You're welcome. um so i guess i'm gonna start with the questions now are you okay, ready? I'm ready okay okay so the first oh also how this is gonna work is i'm gonna ask her the question and then i'll kind of say what my answer for it is too um so yeah anyways mom the first and you'll read my verses right yes okay just tell me when to read them and i'll read okay. them okay so the first question is what's one scary thing that has happened to you and how did you deal with it 
So um, the first thing that came to mind on that one was when you were born, um, two weeks after you were born, we noticed this little spot oh, on that's your what eye. You're about. Yeah, well, for me as a parent, I was really scared. Well, I wasn't really scared at first. I thought it was just like a little scratch from your fingernail. We took you into the doctor, and immediately the doctor said, Oh, I think that's a hemangiona. And I was like, Well, what's that? And then I started reading about what that was. It was right on the, like, the your eyelid right there and um, took her into specialist and and it turned out that's what it was and they told us basically that it was gonna grow and it had the potential of covering your eye and having you might have a problem with your eyesight and all this stuff and it was just the immediate big scare that there was a big problem and we couldn't find a doctor that would do anything about it we had we searched and searched and searched and it was very very scary I'm not gonna lie but after the scare was over um, after I gained my composure about okay what are we gonna do here I started pressing into God's Word and um, one of my favorite scriptures that um, that I stood on and I um, meditated chewed on meditated that's what meditation means is to chew on it to over and over in your head and to just not just one time but like remember you know um over and over type of a thing so could you um 1 peter 2 24 uh yes okay 1 peter 2 24 okay so this verse is he personally carried our sins in his body on the cross so that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right by his wounds you are healed so his, what he did for us on the cross, um, he took, he paid the price for our sins so that we could be healed. And I stood on that verse and um, God is so good. He brought me so much peace and um, brought us through that situation. We saw a lot of things, learned a lot of things about that particular thing. Uh, hemangiona basically is a, it's a, a tumor and it can range anything from a tiny little thing to we when we were getting treatment for Chloe we would drive from Massachusetts down to um, New York City It was the only place that would do a laser on a hemangiona it was kind of a new and upcoming thing for that because basically all the other doctors were saying just let it do its thing and it'll go away after a couple of years but that just was not okay with us and um, so we ended up driving down there, and um, in the clinic, we saw cases of these hemangionas that were on some children covering their whole bodies. Very, very severe. It just um, something I had no idea about, and praise God, Chloe didn't have to deal with something that harsh, and it never, by getting the laser done, never ended up growing. But, but we're just so thankful that God was with us and protecting us, and that we had his word to meditate on yeah, um, during that time. So that was my thing. Yeah so good um okay so what's one scary thing that happened to you and how'd you deal with it okay well obviously what i just talked about was the lockdown um and i mean there's been like scary things that have happened to me but i haven't had it as hard as a lot of people have um but that's just something that came to my mind what's one scary thing that has happened to you and then how did you deal with it honestly okay so this happened about it is monday when i'm filming this and this happened like like three days ago um so Honestly, how I've dealt with this is it's something where you can't force yourself to get over it. You can't force yourself like, boom, okay, this just happened. Now, Jesus, give me peace. And then you're like, yippity dabbity do like everything's perfect. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's not like that. Um, obviously, it took me about like I had to have the whole rest of that day to just honestly sit there and process that that happened. Um, and I think that that's one of the things like taking time to process after something scary happens or after you just like kind of, you know what I mean, feel fear. You got to process it. And that's completely OK, because our bodies work that way and you need to allow yourself time you can't force yourself to get over something because that's toxic for yourself you can't do that to yourself um but what i did is i prayed to god so much and i was like god i don't really feel like getting over this right now god i'm really worried i'm really scared but lord show me your peace and show me how you can give me peace in this sort of situation because right now i feel fear inside of me but i know that your spirit isn't fear and i know that your spirit lives inside of me so lord show me your peace even when i don't feel it and it took me a couple of days honestly but i woke up this morning and i really wasn't nervous it actually kind of started last night but 
I basically just took in time to sit and worship and just worship God, and though I haven't been perfect, um, I just, which is okay, like, it's okay, you don't have to force yourself to be perfect, you don't have to expect to be perfect, but taking genuine times for yourself to sit and worship with God and praise Him for who He is and praise Him that everything is not in your hands but in, in His hands, um, that is a very important thing to do. Um, and that's kind of what I did, honestly. Um, and sometimes I'll, like, write out prayers in my notebook to God, because sometimes I can't always speak what I'm feeling really well in words, so when I feel like I can't do that to God, I write things down in my notebook, and I'm, like, I write, like, love letters to Jesus, like, Lord, thank you for protecting me and everybody in the school. Um, so that's something that really helps, just journaling to Jesus, um, and, yeah, that's kind of, I don't know. I kind of just let my body process it, and I talk to God about it, and again, it's not something we're gonna, I'm not, Jesus isn't a genie in the bottle, so he's not, like, some magic creature, so you're just gonna be like, God, give me peace because this happened. No, God made us all human beings, and we're, we all have, we all have bodies that take, sometimes, longer than others, no one's the same, but, to process things, but, I just let it process in my body, and, Today I'm feeling so much better because I woke up with God's renewed peace this morning. I'm like, it's not in my hands. It's in his hands. Amen. So, That's good. Um, yeah. And really good. And also just like, like my mom said, meditating and chewing on scripture. Um, I'll share a verse right now, which is John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. That is, like, the verse that's helped me the most through this whole thing, um, because I think that so much, often, after something scary happens, it's easy to run to it, a uh, worldly source, like, scrolling endlessly on Instagram, or scrolling on TikTok, or binge eating, which is, like, something I have to work on, too, because I get it. It's we really, all do. It's, it's really easy to run to that after something like that. Ice cream. Yeah. After something like that happens, yes. and hey, girl, eat your food, but, like, um, yeah. Uh, because I get it, but I'm saying that we should never be looking for true peace from a worldly substance. God's peace is different from the world, and just meditating and sitting in the presence of God is how I felt peace through this. So, anyways, yeah, I don't want to talk too much because this is about my mom mostly. Okay. Well, no. Oh, uh, well, no, but you know what I mean. Okay. okay. Okay, so the next question, Mom, is what's your favorite verse for anxiety? Okay, so this one was very easy. This is the one that I'll never forget um, when Chloe was like two years old. Um, we oh, this is my life verse. Yeah, we would go outside and play, and she would run around in the driveway, and I remember she flipped out when the leaves were blowing, and she was like flipped out and I'm like this is okay this is our first verse this is the one we're going to memorize for life so um this is the one she has implanted in her spirit because I have it implanted in my spirit because I used to get afraid of different things why too. was I scared of leaves I don't know but they were like brushed they were blowing around and you were like <laughs> you took a, you took you took a video of me and I remember I'm just going leaves leaves go away leaves <laughs> But anyways, so 2 Timothy 1.7 is, The Lord did not give me a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. And you can, like, look it up in different um, Bible translations, and um, the Amplified goes into a really, really good, um, calm and well-balanced mind. It adds to it, and um, that's a verse that would just, sometimes, again, we talk about meditation, but meditating on that over it would take me sometimes just driving or if something happened that was scary while I was driving or whatever it was that just brought anxiety to my heart I would just sometimes need to repeat that like over and over and the peace of God would just start to overtake me it wasn't like an instantaneous pill but it was like the Holy Spirit working in me you know through that verse yeah so, definitely yeah. that's so good and honestly i was gonna share either the one i just read which is john 14 27 and or i was gonna share the one i just read to you because that's been like that was the verse i'm pretty sure that's the first verse i ever learned it's been basically my like life verse to timothy 1 7 the lord did not give you a spirit of fear but power and love and a sound mind but when you give your life to god and when you have a close relationship with god the Lord lives in you, and he is not a spirit of fear, but he holds love in a sound mind. Um, and so that doesn't mean when you give your life to God, you're going to feel like you have a sound mind and you're going to feel peace, but it means that yeah. you have the one who is peace living right. inside of you. Amen. And then that will start to transform you, and that will start to change the way you are. Not because of who you are, but because of who he is. So oh, good. that's what I was going to say. Very good. Um, yes. So the next question is... 
what do you do when you start to feel anxious? So, um, yeah, and this is where I had John 14, 26. So when I start to feel anxious, there's a lot of different things that, you know, your flesh wants to do, wants to go, you know, do all the things that, that appease or like satisfy your flesh, like go eat something or go, you know, do something fun or this or that to try to cover it up. But the real thing that brings true, genuine peace for me is to get alone, to get quiet, and lately it's been to go for a walk and talk to God and talk to talk to the Lord and ask the Holy Spirit to give me wisdom about something. And um, as a believer, you can have the Holy Spirit living in your heart. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit is our counselor, like it's a gift in our heart. And it's it's always, the Holy Spirit is all, always a gentle, calm, whisper voice that is always lined up with God's truth and so my verse is John 14 26 on that one if you want to look that up okay that verse is but when the father sends the advocate as my representative that is the Holy Spirit he will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I have told you so I think with that it's just um it's never anything that you use as like power or a weapon to fight against people it's always truth and it's always always like rooted in love always because the Lord is love and um, it's never anything anytime you think that the something's telling you to do something mean or wrong or aggressive or against another person that's probably not the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit is always together is always trying to find a way to unify and to um, reconcile and to bring things together and to bring people together to love better and harder more um, and to to just bring unity and so um, just know that just know that as a believer yeah that's so good um, so what do you do when you start to feel anxious well for me obviously like everything my mom is saying is stuff I do too but like and I definitely agree with her on a lot of stuff she's saying um on like everything she's saying but what do you do when you start to feel anxious honestly what I do is the second I start to feel anxiety striking me if, it, if I'm somewhere where I can like if I'm at school and that happens I instantly first of all uh, I put on worship music in my AirPods because I'm just going to say this, it might upset some people, but listening to worldly and secular music and filling your mind with that most of the time, and I'm not saying all secular or worldly music is bad, but I'm saying if that's what you're using to cope when you feel anxiety or anything like that, that is not going to help. But when you lift up the name of Jesus instead of lifting up the name of the world, you'll start to realize that it's not about the worldly feelings you're feeling inside of you. It's about the one who knows how to help you and the one who knows how to deal with you. So that's why I like to listen um, with, to worship music whenever I'm feeling anxious. Because first of all, it just has a peaceful, even if you're not like a Christian and you're listening to this, it has a very peaceful like, um, or Christian or just like follower of God, whatever you are, does not matter. It's just about following God. But um, if it, even if you aren't following Jesus, it has a very like peaceful sort of vibe. Mm -hmm. And second of all, it's like you're worshiping the one who has everything in control. And that's the way, I, that's why I love worship music so much. Um, and Good. what's the third, or, oh yeah. And then the second thing I do is I say, God, fill me with your peace right now. And I feel like so often we try to come up with a perfect prayer, but God sees our hearts. And if you don't have a lot of words for him, that's okay. Just be honest and say, God, fill me with your spirit of peace and fill me with your spirit of love. Um, and I usually just put on worship music wherever I am. And I just pray and I talk to God like if I'm walking to class I'll be like hey God I'm walking to class right now because I feel like sometimes anxiety happens because we get this sort of sense or lie in our head that we're alone but we are that's how it works for me at least but we are never alone when we have the one who created the sunsets and the stars and the moon with us like Amen. there's never a time whether if that guy texted you back or whether that friend is talking whatever is happening to you in your real life you have a creator who loves you and who created this whole earth and who wants to have a personal close relationship with you and he wants to be there and talk to you so never treat god as a religious figure but treat him as a best friend and talk to him talk to him during your daily life and talk to him like like a best friend because like i said i feel like anxiety sometimes strikes when we get the sense that we're alone or we have to deal on thing deal with things by our own but jesus tells us so many places in scripture to give burden all of our burdens to him and he will take care of us that's really good um yeah so, so that's good. what i do um anyways okay so good the next question is 
what would your advice be for someone who deals with anxiety slash like panic attacks and stuff like that and that so um i'm wondering if anybody has ever heard of the starfish breathing method so just it's just a little thing that you can do even a kid can do it um and basically you start and you take a you take a deep breath in pause and out in pause and out and if you're not if, if people are listening to this right now can you like explain what you're doing just if they can't see you so i'm using my hand as a um my five fingers as something to remind me of when to breathe and when to breathe out and it kind of helps you regulate your breath it's just an object to kind of visualize what you're doing so you're breathing in you're stopping at the top of your thumb and then you're breathing out you're going down your thumb and you're pausing and then you're breathing in the top of your index finger and then you're breathing out pausing and then you go up your next finger pause and then down pause and then up pause and then down pause not as fast as i'm talking you do it nice and slow take deep breaths yeah and, do it at your pace deep exhales get your breath in order so that you can kind of catch your breath and start to think rationally okay and then the next time you can say simple little things at your pauses like i'll do one one thing and these all have scriptural references that chloe can say afterwards but i'll just say it simply okay breathe in and at the pause say jesus loves me breathe out oh i love that breathe in at the top say jesus is my protector pause breathe out oh. breathe in jesus will comfort me pause breathe out jesus cares for me out breathe in jesus is lord pause and breathe out and it's just something to bring you back into focus but to remember that god has got this you don't have to hold it all yourself god's got this and it brings your breathing back in order and it helps you calm down so those verses all have reference if you want to okay jesus loves me is john 15 9 john 15 9 okay okay john 15 9 is um i have loved you even as the father has loved me remain in my love i love that verse it's actually it's um one of okay sorry this is off topic but one of the things i do sometimes is this can also help with anxiety but i put like verses at certain times of the day so like i'll put a verse for when my alarm wakes me up in the morning i'll like i'll set it on the reminder app on my phone like a verse and then um i'll set one for like when i know i'm about to go to lunch at school or when i know i'm about to have a class that might make me nervous or i don't know why but like um but i just set reminders on my phone for different parts of the day with bible verses and whenever you're looking at your phone it's like oh hey it's a bible verse um but anyways yeah yeah so that's a, that's a good one that one's jesus loves me jesus is my protector psalm 18:2 psalms 18 too that would probably be this way i don't know if i marked that one it's okay i can probably i may it. i can have it on my phone if you want me to get it yeah just do it psalm 18 18 2 2 the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. Oh, my yeah. God is my rock in whom I take refuge. So you're, Jesus is my protector. And then we've got Jesus will comfort me. That's John 14, 16. You want to do that one? Yes. John 14. It's a little bit sweaty out here. It is. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Actually. Okay. John 14, 16 says, um, and I will ask the father and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you that's good and then jesus cares for me is one peter five seven one peter five seven um that is five okay that is um give all your worries and cares to god for he cares about you okay and jesus is lord is philippians 2 9 through 11. Philippians. 
Um, okay, that is, therefore God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father so good huh yes so good yeah so that's okay. it for that so those are your verses are okay my, yeah awesome that's so good um so what i do when okay wait no what's that what's the question um advice for someone who deals with anxiety slash panic yeah. attacks honestly like i said i set reminders on my phone if you haven't done that already i would for an example like set in a reminder for 7 a.m and make that like a scripture that you love and if you don't really know any scriptures off the top of your head what i like to do is go on google and look up like verses for anxiety or verses for loving my enemies or whatever um and i'll set that verse um as a reminder for 7 a.m on my phone and then you can set one for like 1 p.m and just make that another verse 5 p.m another verse whatever you want to do um but that can just be a really great way to put scripture first of all it helps you memorize scripture but it also helps you just meditate on it more and more um and another thing is like honestly like i said before just talking to god because i feel like anxiety so often comes from the feeling that we're alone and or like we have to do things by ourselves but that isn't true god died on the cross so he could have a personal relationship with you jesus wants to be your best friend jesus wants your honesty jesus is the one who created your heart he understands you he understands your worries and your feelings and your thoughts Amen. so come to him with it all and a song i love is like actually this is like one of the questions coming up but um one of the songs i love is at the altar by elevation rhythm it's so good if you have it link it I sh i'll link it in the description for you guys um but if you haven't listened to that song listen to it basically it's talking about how like god can use your weaknesses and god can use all your anxiety and all your worry when you lay that down to him and let it turn into something that he can form into something good because we're humans we live in the world and we have weaknesses but in our weaknesses he makes us strong jesus can use your broken dreams and your brokenness and make it into something beautiful that's um good. yeah so that's basically what i do and honestly like my mom said i that starfish method starfish method i'm not even sure i knew about that but that's such a good thing to do yeah um yes but i love that yeah so the next question is how does jesus give you peace um i'm trying to remember well did you did you do the worship song was that the next one or no on um, the next one is how does jesus give you peace oh okay. but i mean you can answer the worship oh one maybe i never um that's okay yeah so that one so he gives me peace first of all after you ex oh this is the one i wanted to um okay so if you're not a believer and you haven't accepted jesus christ as your savior First of all, it's very easy. Even believers have have a tendency to do this. You, you take the pressure of life and all of the anxieties that come, whether you're a kid, a teenager, an adult, whatever it is, you take it and you try to solve it yourself. And so easy to that do. can be like carrying a thousand weights on your shoulders. And um, it can be very heavy and it can be all consuming, okay? Um, but when you've accepted Jesus as your Savior, He promises to take care of those burdens and 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 give us peace. So um, one of the things that I wanted to do is it's been a while since I was thinking about this, but um, actually yeah. I wanted to wanted to read a prayer um, mm -hmm. for anybody that maybe um, doesn't know Jesus and just wants to be sure that they that they're salvation is secure or wants to you know has a lot of anxiety or a lot of fear that's going on or has been through the same thing that chloe's been through at her school um it might if anybody wants to say this prayer um you can say it in your heart or out loud um i'll just read it thank you lord for your promise of protection in psalms 91 and other places in your word based on your i'm sorry oh, it's okay let me grab my glasses it's okay um, based on your word, I proclaim no evil will come near the children at Aubrey Rogers or any other school. I thank you for your angels that are guarding over and protecting all the children and keeping them safe and away from any type of danger and destruction or any other plans of the evil one. We thank you, Jesus, that you have a great plan for each one of them, a plan to prosper them and not to harm them. 
thank you for your promise of protection and provision. If there is anyone that does not know you, Lord, I want to give them a chance right now to do so. Repeat in your heart out or, or out loud, Lord, I am a sinner. I believe in what you did for me on the cross. Thank you for the gift of eternal life. Please come into my life and save me in Jesus' name. And once you do that, that's so good. Yeah, once you do that, um, you are a believer in Jesus Christ. And the next step would be to um, find a good church in wherever you live. And if you ever need help looking for a church, I'm sure Chloe, you could message Chloe. Oh, yeah. Message me on Instagram. I will link my Instagram down below. I do have a private account. So you would have to request to follow me or like request to send a message. I think that's how it works. Yeah. But I can definitely approve you and I will help you. I also, not just finding a church, but I can also help you if you have any questions, you need to talk about something. I'm always here. Maybe you could link your... um, the way podcast Instagram so that oh oh you're right I like yeah that one. and okay. they can message you through that way yeah because yeah. that one's actually public so y'all can just like message me through that one yeah if you have any personal questions I'll link that down below um but yes I will do that and if you need help finding a church near yourself I can help you um but anyways what were you saying so so that's pretty much it for me I think it was what was the question all um how does Jesus give you peace? So, I mean, Jesus gives me peace from his word, reading his word, and through the Holy Spirit, once you become a believer, the Holy Spirit lives in you and speaks to you um, and gives you peace. It's a supernatural yeah. peace that you can't you can't hold or show a picture of, or um, but it's a knowing, it's a gentle knowing in your heart, and it's a gift from Jesus. When he died, he left his counselor with us that we went over earlier, so um, that that's his word is huge that's so good spirit that's so How good. about you um well yeah jesus gives me peace through one through the fact that his word is the same yesterday today and forever and two through the fact that it's sharper than a double-edged sword so when somebody's trying to say something or when i start to feel anxious i'm like okay but does it line up with the truth because the truth is found in the book of the bible nowhere else um And honestly, one of the things that gives me the most peace in the world is knowing that if I'm having a feeling and it doesn't line up with the Bible, then that feeling is basically just worthless. That feeling doesn't mean anything when it doesn't line up with scripture. So when you're starting to feel anxious, I'm not saying this to devalue anybody's feelings or say, you can't feel anxious, that's a sin. No, we're human, right? Yeah, we're human. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is that when you're starting to feel anxious, remember that that is not from Jesus. Take upon the spirit of Jesus. And if you're having trouble doing that, just pray and say, God, give me your spirit of peace. Because I don't feel peace myself right now, but I know that there is peace in your name. Um, And Jesus is just overwhelms with so much peace and overwhelms in the best way, in the best holy, beautiful way ever. Um, So, yeah, that's what I do. And then, Mom, what's your favorite worship song? So I wrote down, I have a lot of them, but right now, um, Your Great Name by Chrissy Nordhoff. So maybe Chloe will link that one yeah. too. Yeah. I just think her voice is so pretty with that song, but I, I love that song. Um, yeah, it's a nice song. Yeah, so I love good. that one. Mine is At the Altar. Like I said, I love that song. I also love Good, Good Father. I think it's by like Chris Tomlin. I'll link all these songs I'm talking about down below, by the way. Um, but if you guys have Spotify, you can also look up on Spotify, like worship for anxiety. And there's so many options and playlists you can listen to. Um, and I just think that's amazing. And like I was saying earlier, fill your mind with praising Jesus rather than secular music most of the time. And I don't say that in a mean sort of like goody two shoes way. I say that in a way that if you've been feeling like you're just filled with the dirtiness of the world, it's because you're not washing yourself with the new wine and the cleanness of the Lord. And you're not worshiping Jesus. Um, and you're worshiping the creation rather than the creator. And when you start to worship the creator and the creator of good and peaceful things, you'll start to feel that inside of yourself. Um, so yeah, anyways, so the next question there's, Oh wait, I think this, this is the last question. It's getting sweaty out here, guys. It is. Okay. Okay. okay, okay. Put up my hair. Okay. Okay. The last question is how do you stay strong when something scary happens or with everything around, around us in the world and like the dirtiness of the world or whatever's happening? Oh, man, it's hard in today's world, especially, like, I can't even imagine growing up today. Like, and when I was growing up, we didn't have social media, and there's just so much, like, flashing in your faces, all of the different things that you can, the social sites that you can get information from. I would suggest 
get off social media, take a pause, take a fast, put your phone down whenever you can. Um, I'm not saying like don't ever do it, but sometimes if you feel overwhelmed, maybe put down your phone, put down. It really does help. Yeah, put that down because truly Jesus is the peace that passes all understanding. And there's a scripture for that. It's Philippians 4, 7. Will you look that one up? Yeah, I love that verse. Yeah, I mean, he he will give you the peace you're looking for. And you'll be shocked. It'll be really hard to be putting down your social media and to not be doing all that. But after a little bit, all of a sudden, you'll just feel this peace. And then, then you can hear Jesus. And then you can relax a little bit and know that yes. he's got you. Yes. Um, can I read six through seven? Because I, sure, sure. I feel like those two just go together. I don't yeah. know. Okay. So Philippians four, six through seven. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Oh, that's so good. It's so good. But yeah, is that that was good. That, that was, was so awesome. good. That was so good. Um, I love this girl. Oh, I love you too. Okay. <laughs> um, but my answer to that question, how do you stay strong when something scary happens or with everything around us? Honestly, like my mom said, first of all, yes, getting off social media. I don't say this in like a sort of like, get off social media. Like I'm better than you. Yeah, because we go on social media. It's a good too. thing to yeah. have. It's a great thing. I love social media. Just taking a little break. But if you've been feeling and be honest with yourself it's okay because i make the mistake basically on a weekly basis but be honest with yourself if you've been feeling drained from it if you've been feeling like you've been stuck in comparison if you've been feeling like you're stuck in worry oh that's my dog mose right here if you're watching this on youtube um but get off social media delete i just had to take about like a two week break from snapchat because it was just too much for me but i got it back when i felt like i was a little bit better and i felt like i was just like but if you feel like it's taking you away from god again be honest with yourself delete it i'm not saying delete it forever but but just delete it for the time you think you need and focus on jesus rather than social media not just social media but anything you're making an idol like it might be a certain guy or, or just literally anything yeah um but you're so beautifully made by God and social media can sometimes tell you otherwise. Um, so when just you start comparing yourself to other people, you know, that's not God because he made yeah. you perfect. Yeah. Just the way you are. And honestly, while I'm right here, I'm, I'm just going to read this like one more scripture and then I'll be almost done guys. Don't worry. Um, but Philippians four, eight through, or wait, no, just eight. And now dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. So, Amen. yeah. If you've been feeling like there's something taking your thought process away from God or something excellent and worthy of praise, um, then get rid of that thing for the amount of time you need and focus on Jesus and get up in the morning and meditate on his truth and his peace. And um, another thing, one, more, one last thing I want to talk about is gratitude literally helps me so much. Gratitude helps defeat fear. Um, and I think that's what a lot of what this verse is saying. Anytime, and it could be something little, not just about the lockdown, but it could be something little, like being anxious about my math homework. Like, you know, like when you have an assignment to do and then you're putting it off, like I don't want to do it, I'm anxious, I don't want to do it, you know what I mean? Or anxious about a test, or not even about school, just anxious about anything what I do every time I start to feel that sort of like procrastinating sort of fear anxiety whatever coming upon me I I start naming things I'm grateful for and not just like I have shelter I have a house I have food if those are things be grateful for those things because yes obviously like yes but also naming the little things you're grateful for helps me so much like Thank you, God, that I can go and I can see a sunset. Thank you, God, that you paint skies every morning and every night for me. Thank you, God, that I can get up and I can journal and get in your word. Thank you, God, for the trees. Thank you, God, for my pets. Thank you for the smiles and that I get to walk past people every day at school and get to meet somebody new that's part of your creation and getting to see your beautiful creation every day and the faces of people and the world around me. Just naming little yeah, things like that. That yeah. literally is my coping. All of a sudden, you start to feel yourself and you get so, smile. Yeah, like, I get. Wait a minute, I'm, I'm like, so blessed. And like, you get just get so happy because it's like, you. I heard this thing the other day. It's like anytime you're feeling anxious, look at your problem and then think about how big the world is. Mm -hmm. There's so much going on, and I know that's like, I'm not saying devalue your feelings or like completely brush past them, but I'm saying don't let yourself sit in them. Um, 
and the world is so much bigger than what is going around in your own little world so try your best to just remember that and always gratitude always really helps and just like naming the little things that you're genuinely grateful for helps so much and i just wanted to put amen. that out there amen that's so um, good yes mom since you're my guest on my podcast will you pray us out of the podcast today sure okay. sure okay thank you so much lord um thank you for being being our shelter thank you for being our protector thank you lord for comforting us and for caring for us and for loving us um you are so good um thank you for dying on the cross for us thank you for going through such a um, terrible death on the cross um for us um you forgave our sins and we are eternally grateful for that father thank you for your holy spirit for living in us um thank you for your angels that charge over us and keep us safe thank you for all that we have god our families our parents um our siblings our homes um everything that we have we are eternally grateful lord we thank you for everything in your precious name jesus amen amen thank you guys so much for listening or watching this podcast we love you guys so much i'm definitely gonna have my mom again on the podcast sometime soon because she's such a good guest thank and you. Oh, <laughs> what was that it was a butterfly oh i thought it was like a i thought it was what one was of those he's in behind <gasps> us he's so pretty he wanted to be in the podcast oh my gosh i i didn't know that was a butterfly there's like sometimes these weird black flying bugs <laughs> like fly around pro i don't even know what it is i'm like oh my gosh but that was a butterfly i like butterflies guys don't be fooled um but anyways that's just one example of god's beautiful creation but Amen. anyways i love you all so much okay one more thing one more thing i have this app called abide and it just came to my mind it has like sleep stories like jesus sleep stories it will read you any bible passage you want there are some things you have to pay for but there's a lot of free stuff on there too um and i just realized and it also has like little meditations like three minute bible verse meditations Ooh, that's good Ooh, and that I'll link that. Link that. Link the verses. Link the worship songs. And yes. Yes. It really helps. It's really great. Okay. Anyways, we love you guys so much. Bye, everybody. Most importantly, Jesus does. Amen. Bye, guys. <laughs>